One mod that all of you watching right now should download is the repeating Synaptic Accelerator bug fix. Patch 2.11 implemented a new issue where enemies detecting you will trigger Synaptic Accelerator over and over again, which puts you into a seemingly endless time slow. The second combat begins, this will end, but effectively here, the cyberware just keeps activating, bypassing its own cooldown as long as enemies are just detecting you and not actually in combat with you. This can become incredibly annoying if you're just running past enemies on the street, but thankfully with this bug fix mod, Synaptic Accelerator will once again only trigger one time before going on cooldown rather than you getting stuck in constant time slows. But what ended up being one of the most controversial changes of patch 2.11 wasn't actually a change from patch 2.11. Sonic Shock was changed quite dramatically in patch 2.1. Previously, it would prevent enemies from tracing you, but it stopped doing that after the update. Many thought this was just a bug and an error, so with patch 2.11, many were hoping CDPR would fix this. Except that fix never came, and since we've seen communication that this is in fact an intended change to Sonic Shock, so now Sonic Shock's really just useful for stealth sniping, but less so for stealth net running. Thankfully, modders have already resolved this for PC users. Sonic Shock prevents trace or store the previous functionality. Just upload a higher tier of Sonic Shock first, and you could take out entire bases from the shadows. But if you do want to just get rid of reveal position overall, you're tired of seeing this stupid bar. Alternatively, you could grab the mod Disable Reveal Position Hack 2.11, which will just flat out remove reveal position from the game overall, so you can now freely quick hack enemies without much consequence one way or another. Quite overpowered, but hey, it's your game. And for me, my personal favorite is a third option, all of these coming from the same mod author. Trace position overhaul will make it so only higher tier enemies have this tracing ice implant, and these are going to be the enemies that can use reveal position on you. So early game, most of these general enemies you're able to hack freely, but pay special attention to bosses or some of the higher tier enemies in a group as those will have the tracing ice. But also net runners are far more powerful here as a net runner will be able to apply the tracing ice to everyone on their network as long as they're alive. So it actually adds a bit of strategy into being a stealthy netrunner. Take down a few select enemies first, then you'll be able to freely quick hack everyone else in the group. And this mod also does work with the Sonic Shock Restored mod, so you can use both together for a much easier netrunning experience if you want that. And the other major and controversial change to come from patch 2.11 is the new cyberware capacity limit. You are now locked to 450 cyberware capacity or less, and for many of you, this means that there are several pieces of cyberware that are no longer able to be equipped with your current build. The best workaround I found to this is no cyberware cost with working edge runner. So now cyberware has zero cost associated with it and you could fully kit out your character once again without worry. And this does maintain the functionality of the edge runner perk for going over the cyberware capacity limit. Since the release of patch 2.1, we've been seeing some truly epic strides with cyberpunk content. The big updates for this game are largely over. Now we can look forward to epic mods releasing, some of which just came in the past couple of weeks. So in this video, I'm going to show you some incredible new and fully custom weapon mods that are truly incredible, how modders have added FSR 3 into Cyberpunk, and even a new take on making your Cyberpunk 2077 truly look like real life. And even just this week, everyone's favorite modder Deceptius added in custom art pieces that you're able to display right in V's apartment. This comes complete with a standalone quest as well as several vendors we can get more art. And one of the pretty awesome parts about this is you can also get it in real life. That thanks to today's video sponsor, Display. Displayed offers high quality metal posters that you can easily hang and swap out. A variety of new Cyberpunk 2077 themed designs were just released featuring some epic Phantom Liberty visuals. And you can pick these up using my affiliate link down below and even get a bit of a discount for yourself. But you may have also not been getting as much FPS as possible in Cyberpunk 2077, as just recently FSR 3 frame generation was released for Cyberpunk 2077. So now, not officially, CDPR has confirmed that this is on the way, but who knows when that's coming out. And instead here, modders have successfully implemented implemented FSR 3.0, and this could lead to some major performance bonuses. I wouldn't be shocked if many of you just missed this mod. It was actually uploaded to Nexus as a universal mod tool instead of on the official Cyberpunk 2077 Nexus. But after a quick and very easy installation, I saw a gigantic FPS boost. Going from FSR 2.1, which is built into the game right now, to the new FSR 3.0 with frame generation, I saw my FPS double, like, almost literally. On FSR 2.1, I had a 53 FPS average at 4K on a 4090, but with the FSR 3 mod, I got up to 95 FPS. 
And in real terms, this means I'm able to play Cyberpunk 2077 at about above 100 FPS at almost all times. This is the game fully maxed out with path tracing on, and I'm still able to pull over 100 FPS in most situations. So of course, this is my specific bonus on a higher end PC, but there are tons of users reporting gigantic FPS gains from this one, including many with very old Nvidia GPUs like 1060s or even a laptop 2060s. Although this is not a perfect implementation of FSR 3. You are required to use the same old DLSS controls in game is basically you're turning on DLSS frame generation, but the game is automatically using FSR3 instead. That's what this mod's actually doing. But with this particular use case, there are two major issues that will impact nearly all of you. Firstly, there are some serious ghosting created as a result of this one. You'll notice this predominantly on the HUD just as you're driving around and playing. It almost looks like parts of the HUD are dragging on screen. And even more notable, while driving towards the bottom of your screen, the edge of your car will be ghosting and just create some unpleasant visual artifacting. So not the worst price to pay for doubling your FPS, but thankfully you don't need to pay this. As modders have already come to the rescue here as well. Frame gen ghosting fix will remove the vast majority of the ghosting produced here. It's not completely perfect at points, so you can definitely see a bit of it, but when using this mod, this FPS bonus is a no-brainer. It is absolutely worth it, even with some of the ghosting problems. There are some issues with frame times. This is not an official implementation as of right now, but honestly, this didn't bother me too much. And the second major issue is going Going to be a bit larger because right now this FSR3 mod will only work with NVIDIA GPUs. So yeah, despite the fact that this mod is adding in AMD's FSR3, since the way this one works is by tricking your PC into thinking DLSS 3.0 frame generation is really FSR 3.0 frame generation, as of right now it only works for NVIDIA GPUs and if you want to use it with an AMD GPU, you either have to pull out your wallet or there might be some workarounds. And the most straightforward solution is LukeFC mod. This mod does work with AMD GPUs, but the problem is it is still in beta and as of right now only on Patreon behind a $6 paywall. When it does come out publicly, it seemingly will be free, and testing this one, it sadly breaks the FPS counter in Cyberpunk, but performance-wise, my FPS was incredibly similar to the other FSR3 mod from Nukem, and I was consistently able to sit at above or around 100 FPS in-game. This too has some ghosting issues, but again, if you use the ghosting fix mod, that is largely resolved, and yeah, both of these options just provide you with a giant FPS boost, which is invaluable if you're using either an AMD GPU or just an older Nvidia GPU. I would honestly recommend these as must downloads right now, because in many ways it is just a free FPS gain. So FSR 3 is finally here, unofficially for Cyberpunk 2077, but now that you have all of the extra FPS, maybe you should make the game look a bit better too. The latest virality in Cyberpunk 2077 modding has been these photoreal reshades, several of which are behind paywalls on Patreon, but Edgelet also also just released as a free alternative to all of that. This is very much so poking at the paywalled reshades, and what this will do is increase gamma and gain, giving Cyberpunk 2077 a more washed out and really just brighter visual overall. And while the still comparisons are fine, things really come together as you're actively playing with this one. It does lack the intense depth of field that some of the other photorealism overhauls provide, but even without it, there are moments where Cyberpunk 2077 looks genuinely lifelike with this installed. This mod has other optional weather overhauls, which will make it almost always overcast or cloudy. This is when the game looks most realistic and why you notice many of these lifelike videos are always using overcast weathers. And I feel like this is one of those mods where things look really good at some moments, like as you're walking around right in those perfect scenarios, but then at other times things just kind of look wonky. But either way, usability wise, this one is far more usable compared to many of the other reshades because it doesn't have the insane blur and you could actually see your HUD and vehicle. And it still does create a really Really nice visual at points in Cyberpunk, and there even is a vibrant variant available, as well as an alternative weather set, so you can introduce quite a bit more color into the game as well as some sun. This combination strikes a nice middle ground of many characteristics of those photorealistic overhauls being here, while still having some life and color that Cyberpunk is known for. But even with fantastic free mods like this one, that virality isn't stopping. As just this past week, a new photorealism preset made its debut, the Unrecord style. Unrecord is that body cam game that went Went viral for genuinely looking like real-life body cam footage. And now, Next Gen Dreams, the author of that photorealism 
Gundam reshade that was going viral is also implementing this body cam aesthetic into Cyberpunk. But this too, you do have to pay for as it is locked behind a $7 Patreon sub, but don't fret as there is already a free alternative out. Compared to the main photorealistic reshade, I imagine this one's going to be quite a bit more niche, but it definitely is interesting. It does have that same realistic visual overhaul, but then giving this fisheye body cam style aesthetic on top of it. So the game is made to look a bit worse to a certain degree to simulate the body cam recording, and there is just a general degree of camera shake that does make this pretty wild to play with. Some gunfights do feel incredibly immersive, like you're actually in the action or really watching somebody who is in the action, but overall I feel like the usability of this one is far lowered even compared to the already fairly unusable photorealistic reshade, because a lot of the UI is simply cut off while you have this fisheye effect. And while you can quickly get back to a typical UI just by using one of the hotkeys, this does become quite tedious quite quickly, so for now I would definitely describe this as more of a curiosity as opposed to something I would recommend using. But if you are interested, if you are curious, make sure you also try the brand new free alternative with Novacam. This too is mimicking that unrecord body cam style of gameplay, and functionally it will be quite similar to the other reshade except this one's free. And if you're using Novacam with Edge LUT, you can create a fairly lifelike looking experience experience in game, which of course does mean lots of blurriness, washed out colors, and its own fair share of visual artifacts. But even still, in the right moments, as you can see from some of the trailers associated with this mod, you can get a truly lifelike looking cyberpunk, and in the newer version of the mod, you could even get this live HUD widget, which does genuinely look really cool. And regardless, I think it's pretty awesome to see CyanideX dropping these free alternatives to popular paywalled reshades, so if you are somebody who's looking to make Cyberpunk 2077 look more realistic, or even just look a bit better, CyanideX's mod are really your best option right now. But then a mod that I would consider a must download for literally everyone playing Cyberpunk, we have DLC Liberation Protocol. This will implement the GOG and Twitch drops Cyberpunk 2077 had in the past into the game in very natural ways. Like for example, just as you're doing a gig, you might stumble upon a pretty epic weapon. Originally, you would unlock this weapon by linking your GOG account to Cyberpunk and having Phantom Liberty owned. Then this weapon would just naturally appear in your stash. That's pretty boring. Just going to your stash to loot something from it, and this method is far cooler. This will also apply to a variety of the Twitch drops to come over the past few years, so if you miss the drop, you can still get the items, and of course now you'll be able to find the items in a far more immersive way. So this mod's really doing things on two fronts. On one hand, if you miss some of the past drops or didn't even realize some of the bonuses you got from connecting your account, this will give you access to them, but also give you access to them in a much cooler way than just finding it in your stash. But if you are sick and tired of the same old weapons in Cyberpunk 2077, we did just get what I would consider the highest quality weapon mod to ever release with Mjolnir. This mod will add in Mjolnir, Thor's iconic hammer, as a new iconic weapon in Cyberpunk 2077. And this thing is absolutely amazing. Even just visually, this looks great, but functionally it is far cooler. Mjolnir has some basic bonuses as a melee weapon. It is electrically charged and strong attacks can trigger this EMP blast, but more notably it has the very unique characteristics of being the only blunt weapon in the game that can also be thrown. So if you have enough stamina, this will trigger electricity on attacks, and if you throw Mjolnir and land a headshot, all enemies around will be temporarily stunned from an electric blast. Some of those iconic Thor scenes are here as well. After you throw Mjolnir, as long as you have enough stamina, simply dodging or dashing will immediately return the weapon to your hands. But of course, since this is a blunt weapon, you could also make use of all the blunt weapon specific abilities in the game, like Quake for when you really want to feel like a demigod-esque superhero. This mod is legitimately a ton of fun, easily the coolest weapons that I've seen integrated into the game thus far, but thankfully not the only custom weapon. Nethound Ram is a pack of two weapons from the same author. And these two are nicely integrated into the world and will have similar effects. The Net Hound Smart Sniper is the stealth variant. This will fire an aimed headshot from stealth, and the enemy's network will be hacked with this headshot. So all devices will be tracked, but the enemy's memory will also be scrambled, so you can maintain stealth if you want to, basically just giving you a free preview of all of the devices on that enemy's network. Conversely, the Net Ram Smart Sniper does almost the same thing, but doesn't have the stealthy component. So any aimed headshot will start tracking enemy devices devices just like the other weapon, but this time around there isn't a stealth component so that enemy will be alerted, and even further this will also scramble all cyberware on the enemy you land the headshot on, making this one pretty powerful because it gives you the option to just quickly shut down a high tier enemy in combat or at the very least shut down their cyberware, but each of these are pretty fun weapons for stealthy or just 
against Netrunner builds in general. Firestorm is one of the newest weapon releases, it just released this past week, but it has a pretty awesome new feature. This will utilize the newly released Trigger Mode Control mod, so by holding down a defined hotkey, you could switch between going fully automatic to semi-automatic on the fly. And of course with Firestorm, which weapon mode you're using will come with unique effects. So Full Auto Fire will increase enemy vulnerability to environmental damage. This can stack up to 5 times in total, and this synergizes perfectly with the semi-auto attack, which fires an incendiary explosive round. So you have this unique combo where you could kind of spray into a crowd with some of the automatic fire, reduce some of their resistances, then pick off individuals with that semi-auto attack. Although even just in its own right, having a weapon that could fire incendiary explosive rounds semi-automatically is very powerful and can lead to a lot of fun. Thankfully, they're not just adding in new weapons though, and we are also starting to get some custom cyberware as well. If you're somebody missing fingers' legs, Medging Yord is the mod for you. This will re-implement the hover legs that were removed in a past update. So after jumping, you could hold the space bar to basically hover in air briefly, or alternatively aim a weapon and you'll be suspended in place to line up that perfect shot. This meshes incredibly well with Mjolnir, and it'll make landing those headshots far easier as you're suspended above the enemy and looking down on them. And these legs will even get a bit of a sprint bonus when Adrenaline Rush is active, or alternatively extra hands, which will add in several new types of hand cyberware. The Ambush Compiler will give you incredibly powerful bonuses when using ricochets from stealth, you could use this coupled with Sonic Shock to form a super overpowered stealth power build. Tactical Link will lead to specific debuffs on an enemy depending on where your smart weapon shot lands. So if you land a headshot, you'll reduce accuracy for that enemy, leg shots will immediately knock them down, and body shots will reduce resistances, stacking with each shot landed. But if you are going for a tech weapon build, you're almost certainly going to want to download this mod just for the external capacitors. This gives tech weapons you wield faster charge speed and even greater impacts on enemies, but also damage will be reduced by less if you're firing at enemies through cover. I really enjoy this one. It expands the available cyberware in game by offering quite a few very specific and niche options. But if you do have that one build, some of the synergies you can create with these new options are just going to make you completely overpowered. And for me, I'm just happy we're starting to enter into that era where we are getting high quality custom weapon and cyberware mods for this game, but we also just have a good old computer. The new mod from Deceptius, Computer Anywhere, allows you to use your PC on the go. Simply hit the sprint key when standing still and you'll take out this little tablet giving you full access to the net. This is incredibly valuable in the base game for buying vehicles or even some of the other quest related tasks you can do here, but for those using a bunch of mods, this will also support Virtual Atelier, making it invaluable in some of those heavier modded playthroughs. And I think as you can start to see here, we are really hitting that stride with Cyberpunk 2077 modding. At this point, it doesn't seem like Cyberpunk 2077 is getting any major updates anymore. From here on out, I wouldn't be shocked if we largely just get fixes and FSR 3 eventually. And while this could be sad, it also is exciting, because this opens the floodgates for mods to finally start to flourish. No more updates breaking them, and no more having to adapt to whatever changes CDPR is implementing. Patch 2.11 came with quite a few issues, several of which we talked about in this video, and we even have mods to fix some of those. But even beyond that, there definitely is a stuttering issue going on. It seems like this is connected to Intel CPUs, and it's definitely alive and well. Even just while filming this one, I had to contend with some major stutter problems. It seems like there's quite a few others out there having the exact same issue. So hopefully we get a hot fix over the next couple of weeks to a month. But until then, check out this video for even more great mods that you should be downloading right now for Cyberpunk 2077.